Let's get a little bit more advanced now with this podcast, okay? What I'm going to do is record the introduction to a podcast, and then I'm going to add some music to it. Hi, this is Colin Kelly, and on my podcast this week, I'm catching up with filmmaker Emma Baker from Emma Baker Films. Emma launched her documentary-making business after a career in education, and in this week's podcast, I'm going to be finding out how she made that leap and what advice she'd give to other aspiring filmmakers. So I'm quite happy now with the introduction that I've recorded. I've tidied it up, taken out the mistakes a little bit. I'd now like to add some music to this. And what I want to happen is to have the music quite loud at the beginning, dips down when I start to speak, comes back up while I take a a pause, and then tails off again at the end, and then the rest of the podcast would follow, okay? Before I bring my music in, I need to fix this mono track that I've got. I can't work with mono and stereo at the same time. So what I'm going to do is highlight it and duplicate the track. And then I'm going to make this track a stereo track. And that's all that's involved. Now I can bring my music in. I know my music is a stereo track. So I go to File and Open. And I'm going to bring this off at my desktop. The music I want is a track called Hot Rod. Let's use that one. Um, so it opens up that, that whole track. Now that whole track's about three and a half minutes long. I only want about 45 seconds of it. So again, I'm just going to highlight the bit that I want. I'll start there, okay, and take about 45 seconds of it. And I'll copy and then come back over here. So I don't need the rest of that anymore. There's no, there's no need to import it all. I'm just trying to keep this as, as quick and simple, as easy as I possibly can. So I'm going to add a new stereo track. So I've added a new stereo track, and now I'm going to paste in the selection of music that I just copied. Okay, so here we see at the top, it's me speaking. At the bottom, it's the piece of music. And when I start to play it, you'll notice that something's wrong. Hi, this is Colin Kelly, and on my podcast this week, I'm catching up with Phil. You can't hear me because the music's so loud, okay? So what we want to do is, well, first of all, I want a few seconds of the music loud let it establish itself, then bring it down as I start to speak. So if I go to this selector tool here and move away from the cursor and choose the time shift tool and click on that, then that lets me now move me and the music independently. I can slide this back and forward, okay? So I want to move this back a bit so that there's a few seconds of music before I come in, okay? So now it sounds like this. This is Colin Kelly, and on my podcast, this... Now, probably what I want is, I just want to, once these heavy drums are started, when the guitar comes in, that's probably where I want to uh, have me speaking, just when it settles down a wee bit. Hi, this is Colin Kelly. Okay, great. Still too loud, of course. So, the music needs to dip, and then you'll see here, around here in the, in the middle of it, and I'd like to make that gap a little bit bigger, actually. So if I go to Clip Boundaries and Split, now what it lets me do is I can move the second half away. So I can make that gap longer if I want. Okay. So the music's going to come in. It's going to dip. I'm just going to start to speak. Music's going to come back up. There's going to be a gap with the music playing. And then as I come back in for the second time, the music's going to dip and then tail off. Okay. But I know that when I start to speak for the first time, it's still too loud. So this is where I go to my envelope tool. And I click in here. And then I drag the music down. Okay. Now, this is a little bit uh, of a footer, as we say in Scotland, to try and get the curve correct, but you can see here the music fades down, stays quieter, 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 moves along, and then I want it coming up again. Okay, so I'm going to click another edit point in there and bring it back up like this. And again, I can slide this edit point like that if I've not quite got it right and I want to get uh, make it more gradual or make it more, you know, make it more immediate. I can extend that out a little bit. And then when I come in and talk for the second time again, Oops, we're going to go down a wee bit more. Now, I learned the old way. I learned in a mixing desk where you do all this manually, and I actually found it much, much quicker. Uh, however, a digital purist would say that this is better because you can get it absolutely right. Okay, 
So then it goes like that, and then it's just going to fade away to nothing. Okay? There is a bit of trial and error with this, especially when you're new to it. You need to get used to manipulating the controls on Audacity. But what you should get is something like this, okay? And let's have a wee play through and see how this is sounding now. Hi, this is Colin Kelly, and on my podcast this week, I'm catching up with filmmaker Emma Baker from Emma Baker Films. Emma launched her documentary making business after a career in education, and in this week's podcast, I'm going to be finding out how she made that leap and what advice she'd give to other aspiring filmmakers. Now maybe what we'd do actually is have the music coming up again at the end and then fading out. Uh, if I need to make some changes, again, it's just this envelope tool. And again, I'm just dragging. And now it helps, I think, if you zoom in a little bit, you can make these much finer uh, edits. If we uh, if we zoom in, we can see the graph much more clearly. And again, we might think, well, actually, do you know what? We need to make that even quieter than it was. It comes down a wee bit like that. And down like that, you know, maybe something like that in there. Then what we would do, so once we've played around with this and we've got our, our project, and that, you know, again, a lot of your projects might be more sophisticated than this, you might have different sound effects, multiple people all talking uh, at once. Again, we would go to file. Now this is important. If I save the project, it keeps all this. So all this stuff here with my, you know, my, my sound uh, decreasing in volume and the way that I've set that up, every, everything exactly these positions, it will save the whole project. If I just export, what it does is it creates one single track mixing all of this together. So the reason that's important is once it's created the final mix, I can't go back in and separate all these elements. So let's say I do my podcast, I mix my sound and my, myself speaking and my music, mix it all and export it as an MP3 or a WAV. And I got a single file that I can publish as a podcast or share, or do whatever I want with. Let's say my friend comes to me and says, look, that's, that's great, but the music's too loud. I can't hear you properly. And you thought it was okay and that's why you sent it all over. But I actually think, oh goodness, yeah, you're right enough. Is that bit there, the music's too loud, it drowns me out. If you've saved the project file, all you need to do is come back to it and adjust the fade, right? Everything else is exactly as it was. You just make that a wee bit quieter. If you haven't saved your project file, you're back to the beginning, right? You've lost it all. You, you're back to, you've got your recording, your audio, which I hope you have kept, and the music, and they're separate. You have to bring them all back in and, and cut it all up and do all this again. So saving the project file, which makes it an Audacity file, means you can always open it back up in Audacity and, and do this. So generally speaking, if I was doing a, a podcast for a client, I'm going to save my project file, make sure I've got that, and assuming I'm happy with it, this is my first draft or whatever, I'm going to export as an MP3 or a WAV, send it over to them. They might come back to me with edits, and in which case I'll reopen my project file and work in here. 